Washington, and it has led Nebraska back to the top spot in team qualifying competition. And it's also given Chris Regal a good chance to move up in the all-around. He's someone we have to watch throughout this competition. And despite early predictions, Nebraska right on top after the first rotation, followed by UCLA, Illinois, and Ohio State. And remember, only the top three advance to the team championships. Now in the second rotation, we're getting ready for the rings and Tony Pineda from UCLA. Earlier on this event in the compulsory round of competition, Tony Pineda had a very bad mistake. Here it comes. Watch his left hand, right there. You could see he got stuck on the rings, could not get off. The compulsories count for 50% of the all-around score, but do not affect the team score. And now, in the second rotation, the freshman from Mexico City, Mexico, the lone member of the Mexican Olympic gymnastics team, Tony Pineda. He's only five foot two. Tony has been a real mainstay on the UCLA Bruins team this season. He is what they've needed in the past. That is team depth. He's really stepped in and done the job. Nice cross there. Very good routine. And you have to think that in the back of his mind lurks what happened to him in that compulsory routine where he could not let go of the rings. And don't forget there are other events taking place at the same time. So concentration is at a premium. Nice dismount. He did not let that compulsory mistake bother him at all. That was a fine exercise on the rings and a good start for UCLA on that event. But Tony Pineda, the freshman from Mexico City and the lone member of that Mexican Olympic team, ironically, Coach Sherlock will coach him, will be the Mexican team coach at the Olympics this year. That's right. Tony, the only gymnast from Mexico competing in the Olympic Games. And a 9.35 on the rings for Tony Pineda. And that's a good start for the UCLA Bruins on the rings. That's a very good start, a 9-3-5. The UCLA Bruins continue to work on the rings. Tim Daggett, the senior from Springfield, Massachusetts. They call him the Bull. He's probably the strongest member of this UCLA squad. I think he certainly is. And one reason Daggett has gotten so strong is that he wants to score well on the rings. Watch this mount. Kip right to a V. Goes to a cross and then pulls out. That's an extremely difficult straight point. Timmy's also added a new dismount at the end of this routine, a triple somersault. There's only two gymnasts in the entire country that do that, Daggett and Gaylord. A great routine so far. Nice giant swing right to a handstand. Here comes that dismount now. Three flips, a minor step. That was a great exercise. He really gets those rings out from his body, doesn't he? He sure does. A tremendous pull is required on that triple flyaway. There it comes now. There's the setup. Now watch the pull on the rings right there. Three complete rotations and a near-perfect dismount. Tim Daggett, the senior from UCLA. All right, Mitch, you're set up. Benny Field has a good chance of making the Olympic team this summer. And he awaits his score. A 9.80 for Tim Daggett. A good score. Real good score. UCLA is off to a great start in the second round here. So Mitchell. Two fine exercises on the rings. This is Mitch Gaylord. Mitch, of course, the current national all-around champion, the best male gymnast in America, and the eighth best all-around gymnast in the entire world. <laughs> nice. Kip to a plant. Held perfect. Notice how steady Mitch is on the rings. Nice shoot, right to across. His body does not quiver back and forth at all. All those positions should be precise and should be held for at least two seconds. He's a joy to watch. He sure is. Here's his triple now, three somersaults, just like Daggett. He got it in, a little short, but not a major deduction. Two great routines for UCLA on the rings. Tim Daggett scoring a 9.80, and Mitch Gaylord, as you mentioned earlier, the current USA champ. And a close competition between Gaylord and Daggett in the all-around. Here's Gaylord shooting right to a cross, an original part, done perfect. Mitch Gaylord, one of America's best hopes for an Olympic medal, awaiting his score. Mitch Gaylord, a 9.75, combined with Tim Daggett's 
That puts the Bruins of UCLA right on top, right where they'd like to be. Meanwhile, a very, very dejected Nebraska team as they watch their championship slip away from them. Just moments ago, John Schmoker had a disastrous performance on the Pommel Horse. And it's ironic, the Pommel Horse has been the event that's always helped Nebraska win the title. They've always seemed to be a little better, but not this year. Watch John fall right there. Unfortunate mistake for Nebraska. The door is wide open for UCLA. And you see the team knowing and Nine, watching four, the mistake five. by John Schmelka. As I said, that sixth straight title is slipping away fast. Yes, it is. And John finishing the routine here. A mistake, a slight pause there, getting a 7.4, and Nebraska has to count that score for the team title. So after two rotations, UCLA has moved into first place, followed by Ohio State and Penn State, with Nebraska dropping off the leaderboard. In the all-around competition, Mitch Gaylord is in first, followed by Tim Daggett and Roy Palasu. So the senior from UCLA preparing for the vault. A good event for Mark. He does a full twisting Sukahara, a very difficult vault. Here it comes. Nice push, a good vault. Peter, I, I think I heard him say the board is broken and he's going over to check it. Yes, that's what he said. The board apparently may have been broken on that vault. Now, if this is the case, the gymnast has the option of repeating the vault or taking the score given on the first vault. While we have the time, let us tell you a little bit about Mark Casso. Back in January of 1980, during a workout on the floor exercise, Mark suffered a broken neck. Many said Mark may never walk again, but hours of rehabilitation and a strong desire to compete got Mark back into the sport. He still recalls his thoughts that day en route to the hospital. I blew it. I said I want to be in a wheelchair for the rest of my life. Then, it just, when it all came back, it was great. It was just, I got another chance at life, you know. And how about competing now? Well, there was a lot of fear in coming back. I, I had a lot of head problems. I was pretty, I was scared about everything. Mark Casso is one of the reasons the word risk is being eliminated from the gymnastics dialogue, replaced with the word courage. Courts and insurance companies do not want to ask a gymnast to risk his life. But Mark is taking a risk right now, foregoing the score of his first vault, a 9.6 to go for a second ball after the broken springboard. Mark's taking a chance, it's right, he got a good score, a 9-6, that could be a better vault, and what's amazing to me, Charlie, is that here's an athlete who got a 9.6 on the vaulting, with a broken board, has the option to go again, and he feels he can better that near-perfect score. Mark Casso, he saw what a comeback story he is, and now he awaits the score on the ball. And he's talking about it. A 9.70, so the risk paid off for Mark Casey. Yes, it did. And here's Daggett on his vault. Oh, a little rough on that landing. That's a new vault for Timmy. He had to stumble back. Not a major break, but the all-around race between him and his teammate Gaylord is very, very close. Daggett cannot afford to give up those tenths. And a 9.45, not a good vault for Tim Daggett. Not at all. That's going to hurt him in his quest for the all-around title. This is Jay Foster from Ohio State, a 5'6 junior, as he prepares for the floor. A very strong tumble, nice full-twisting double back. A real credit to Ohio State's program. Their coach, Mike Wilson, has done a tremendous job in bringing this team up to a nationally ranked power. And you know, Charlie, it was only seven years ago that Ohio State not won a single dual meet in two consecutive seasons and here they are one of the best teams in the country right now they're battling Penn State right now for that nice second press, spot man. that's right a very close team competition for second place Foster nice routine so far no noticeable breaks getting ready for his final tumbling run Nice double back and a great routine. Ohio State is doing a fine job. The Buckeyes, Jay Foster, on the floor exercise. And he's one of the reasons the Buckeyes are right in the team competition right now. A 9.65 for Jay 